All right. So thank you all for joining me for a 60 minute restorative yoga class. If we haven't met, my name's Holly and I will be leading our practice today. Um, so restorative yoga, if you've never practiced it before, it's in the same vein as yin yoga. So the idea is we do long, slow holds of postures. Um, yin yoga comes out of a response to what we would call yang yoga, which would be like Bikram, hot yoga, power yoga, vinyasa, stuff where you're um, moving through space and time rather quickly, holding postures for like 30 seconds or a minute. Those styles of more energetic yoga, you tend to contract muscles a lot. In yin or restorative yoga, you tend to relax muscles more. So we do um, similar postures, but we'll hold them for like one minute, three minutes, maybe even five minutes rather than like 30 seconds to a minute. And because of that, just keep in mind, less is more. You want to do about like 70% of what you think you should be doing, which if you were like me, a go-getter is um, probably the hardest part of class. So more slow styles of yoga can be just as um, mentally, emotionally, spiritually challenging as they are physical, as they are physically challenging. So just Keep that in mind. And if you find yourself thinking like, I'm not doing enough, use this as an invitation, just to remind yourself that you are most certainly doing enough, right? You showed up to yoga, you're sitting tall, you're breathing through your nose, it's all good. So with that in mind, we call it restorative yoga. Take a moment at the beginning of class and I'm just gonna ask you a couple of questions. So sit up tall, find yourself in a comfortable seated position. You can close your eyes. Closing your eyes is distracting. Maybe keep your eyes open, but just a soft, fuzzy gaze. Draw your attention to the midline of your body and start to breathe slowly in and out through your nose. Begin just by ling uh, noticing any lingering impressions from the day. Are there any like, you know, things that you, you're still holding on to that happened earlier today? or um, any tasks that you have to do later that are still kind of on your mind. So name those things, acknowledge them, and then just politely set them aside. You can do those tasks after class. You can rehash that conversation after class. But just for now, give yourself permission to breathe and be still. As you start to breathe into the body, going to ask you another question. How is your heart today? Specifically, how is your heart in this moment? Sometimes the answer is surprising. And last question, what would you like restored? today? What is it that you would like restored? Why is it that you came to restorative yoga? If your answer is, um, you know, I want to heal my hamstring, then keep that in mind. If we're in a posture that's stretching the hamstring, make sure you're not overstretching it. If your response was more along the lines of like, I would like to restore grace towards myself or a sense of gratitude, also keep that in mind as you practice. And if you're doing something that is not in service um, of what you're seeking to restore, again, be it physical, emotional, mental, spiritual, um, let that go, let the ego go. And again, just return to your breath in and out to your nose. Wonderful. Okay, so that's our little check in at the beginning of class. We're going to start first by moving the neck. So as you inhale, stretch up out of the crown of your head. And as you exhale, slowly tilt your right ear towards your right shoulder, stretching the left side neck. And right away, it's worth noting that I'm not mirroring you. So um, it might look like I'm moving my head to the left when in fact, I'm moving my head to the right. There's a lot of philosophical, interesting things about that, um, about our perception of what is and is not. But uh, more importantly, you are welcome to follow my body or my words. 
right? So you're welcome to tilt your head to the left if that makes more sense to you. Just know that in general, we will do the right side of postures first, unless I forget, which is always a possibility. Okay, slowly roll your head down, chin to chest, gentle extension to the neck and compression to the throat. Keep your um, chest lifted and your shoulders down. So it's just the neck spine that's moving. In Ayurvedic medicine, we believe that by dropping the chin to the chest, we can um, stimulate the throat chakra, which conveniently lines up with the thyroid parathyroid gland. So in Eastern medicine, it's believed that bringing chin to chest actually starts to wake up the thyroid gland. Okay, good. This time, roll your left ear to left shoulder, stretching the right side neck. Uh, and this side might feel a little or a lot different from the other side, and that's really normal. I'm right there with you. We are not symmetrical. We are not butterflies. We are humans. We are perfectly imperfect. So, you know, yoga gives us an opportunity to notice our incongruencies, to address them, but it also gives us the opportunity to, like, be okay with the fact that my right shoulder will always be tighter than my left shoulder. I'm at peace with that at this point in my life. Good, slowly roll your head down, chin to chest again, compression to the throat, extension to the neck spine, sitting up tall. Good, this time roll your head up, looking straight ahead and we'll go backwards. So start to look up towards the ceiling, mouth closed, lift your nose up, chin up. So this time extension to the throat, thyroid, parathyroid, chakra, throat chakra, and compression to the neck spine. Again, just the neck moving at the beginning of class. Good, slowly roll your head back to center and this time we'll get the whole spine involved. Place your right hand on the outside of your right hip and as you inhale, reach your left arm up overhead. Try to keep your left sit bone on the floor. You can always come down more, but you wanna press the left hip down. Drop your shoulders down, lift your chest. Option to look straight ahead or gently look up towards the ceiling. Good, sweep your left arm down on the ground around and this time place left hand outside of the left hip and reach your right arm up overhead. Drop your shoulders, lift your chest, press your right hip down as well as your left hip. Option to look forward or look up towards the ceiling, shoulders down, chest up. Good, sweep your right hand down. This time place both hands on the floor in front of you, push the floor away from you and drop your head. Draw your shoulders down away from your ears. So there's a gentle rounding to the spine, but nothing too crazy. Good, slowly walk yourself back up, walking hands towards shins. And this time place your hands close behind you. Start to lift your chest, stick your butt out of it. Look up, if it feels good, you can even drop your head all the way back, never forcing the neck. So this time we're opening the front of the body and compressing the spine. Breathing in, breathing out. Good, slowly roll back to center. We move the spine right, left, backwards and forwards. Now we're gonna twist to each side. So as you inhale, reach your right arm up overhead. Exhale, place your right hand close behind you like a second spine. Inhale, reach your left arm up. Exhale, place left hand on right thigh. Inhale, stretch up, abdomen in. Exhale, look over your right shoulder and twist. Gentle twist to the spine. Notice if you start to lean to one side, evenly distribute your body weight on your sit bones so it's your spine that's moving rather than your hips. Inhale, stretch up, abdomen in. Exhale, look over your right shoulder, twist. Good, slowly, carefully unwind. We'll do the other side. Inhale, reach your left arm up. Exhale, place left hand behind you. Inhale, reach right arm up. Exhale, place right hand on left thigh, knee. Inhale, stretch up. Exhale, pull your abdomen into the twist. Look over your left shoulder. On this side, press the right hip down as much as the left hip. Sitting up tall, inhale, stretch up. Exhale, look over your left shoulder. Twist, twist, twist. Good, slowly, carefully come back to center. Wonderful, next we'll take some cat cows. Find yourself in a tabletop position. I like to do just like 10 minutes of warm up before we hop into the longer postures for restorative. So that's what we're doing here if you're wondering. So coming into a tabletop position, you want knees under hips and wrists 
under shoulders. As you exhale, pull your belly in, round your spine up towards the ceiling and drop your head like a carved out cat on a Halloween pumpkin, right? You wanna round your spine like an angry cat. As you inhale, drop your belly down, stick your butt up and look up towards the ceiling, bend your spine for cow pose. And if you think about a cow, think about how their stomachs kind of hang down, right? That's what we're doing here. Exhale, press your hips forward towards your ribs, drop your head, bring your belly button and mid spine up towards the ceiling, spread your shoulders wide, cat, meow. Inhale, drop your belly down, Open your chest, squeeze shoulders together, bring your hips up towards the ceiling, chin up towards the ceiling, cow pose, moo. One more time, exhale, pull your belly in, spread your shoulders wide, drop the crown of your head down towards the floor, look towards your thighs. And cow, squeeze shoulders together, bring your shoulders away from your ears, stick your butt up, look up, drop your stomach down. Good, come back into a neutral position. We're gonna do some fun stuff with the wrists, ready? This time, bring your hands out to the side, so wrists in, fingers out, and we're gonna take three cat-cows, rounding the spine and bending the spine. Athena, I think I just had a flashback to taking Whitney's vinyasa class with you once and we were talking about this wrist stuff afterwards is really good for your wrists, but it can be a little bit intense as you cat cow. Good, slowly making your way back to neutral. This is where the party really starts to start. This time, flip your wrists forward, fingers back. So from the side, palms facing down, fingers pointing towards your knees, wrists pointing forward, and we'll do three cat cows. So sometimes when we think about yoga, you know, we think about moving our spine or balancing on a leg, or on an arm. We don't think so much about like wrists, right? But wrists are really important. So this is a good way to stretch the wrists. Good, coming back to neutral. Okay, you guys ready to get crazy? Rotate your arms so palms face the ceiling, knuckles face the floor, fingers pointing in, wrists pointing forward. And if you need to bend your elbows out, that is really normal. Here we go. As you inhale, stick your butt up, look up towards the ceiling, cow pose, move. Exhale, press your hips forward, round your spine up, cat pose, meow. Two more, squeezing shoulders together, opening the chest, lifting the chin. Pressing hips forward, so tuck tailbone under, try to round your spine up towards the ceiling, drop your head. One more, bending the spine, stretching the front of the body, cow pose. Cat pose, rounding the spine, compressing the front of the body. Good, come back to neutral. And last little trick, try to make fists with your hands. Woo, squeeze palms together and we'll do one more cat cow <laughs> around your spine. Good, arch your spine. Come back to neutral, sit back on your feet and woo, shake it out. You can do some of this highly technical yoga stuff whatever feels good for your wrist. So that takes like three to five minutes. And if you do it every day, you get wrist uh, mobility and you also move your spine right and left, right? So it's a really great little thing you can do. Okay, from here, we're gonna come back into tabletop and do what's called thread the needle. So as you inhale, reach your right arm up, look up. And as you exhale, slide your right hand through left arm and left thighs, right? You're threading a needle. Okay, you have an option to stay here. Try to keep your hips over your knees. You can also reach your left arm up and drape it behind you for a half bind. And if um, this motion is too intense for your shoulder or any other part of your body, no problem. I'll give you an alternative. You're going to come up, sit on your feet, bring your right arm across your body, bend your left arm up, and then you get that same shoulder stretch without having to put any weight on your shoulder. So I'll always try to give you alternatives for the postures, depending on how your body is today, how your heart is today. Okay, if you have your left arm draped behind you in a bind, start by lifting the left arm up, placing it close by your face. Everybody together, we're gonna in, unthread the needle. Inhale, slide your right arm up towards the ceiling, look up. Exhale, right hand down to the floor, other side. Inhale, reach your left arm up, looking up. Exhale, slide the left hand through, so left shoulder on floor, 
hips over knees, reach your right arm up if you'd like, and drape it behind you for a half bind. And if this doesn't feel good, come on up to a comfortable seated position, cross your left arm over your body, bend your right arm up, drop your left shoulder down, and you get that same shoulder stretch without having to put any pressure on the shoulder or neck. Uh, when you do different modifications or variations of postures, try not to think of it as like this is better or worse. Just think of it as different, right? Variations, modifications, they're not good or bad. They're just different. Good. Slowly, if you have your right hand draped behind you, take that bind out, reach your right arm up, put your right hand on the floor close to your face, and everybody together, unthread the needle, inhale, reach your left arm up, looking up. Exhale, left hand down. Good, and we're gonna take our first long hold posture of the day, a wide-legged child's pose. So bring your feet together, open your knees wide, start to sink your hips down, and reach your arms forward. If having the arms forward is intense on the shoulders, I'm right there with you a lot of days, you can have your arms down by your sides, what's called fetal pose. And you're also welcome to have a towel or a blanket nearby. You might find it more comfortable to put a little bit of a prop like under your head or under your chest. And we're just gonna hold here for three minutes, fun. So as we settle into these longer, more yin style postures, I'll share with you, there's three basic tenets of yin yoga, of restorative yoga. It's pretty simple. You make a shape, you hold a shape, and you breathe through your nose. And again, at first it might feel like, I don't feel anything. And then halfway through, it might get kind of intense. Your job is to be gentle with yourself, to keep checking back on what it is that you would like restored in this class, to honor what your body needs. And your job is also to discern the difference between like, I need to move because this really isn't serving me, right? It's not serving my intentions with class. It doesn't feel right. I can tell I've gone too far or I'm you know, not feeling anything. That's one thing, but notice if you're moving a lot like fidgeting, like it's just hard to sit still. And I'm right there with you too. Stillness is really hard for me. And that's where I remind you that yoga is a practice. So if being still with yourself is kind of hard, just practice, right? Just practice breathing through the nose. Holding still as you sink your hips down and reach your arms forward. Nice stretch to the spine. Already halfway through, I'll give us some time for companionable silence. A slow inhale through your nose. Slow exhale through your nose. And slowly walk yourself up. Take your time. If it feels right, you can exhale through your mouth, sigh it out. And then we're going to turn and lie down on our backs for our first Savasana or Puddle Pose. So, you know, in, in more yang styles of yoga, like um, like 26 and 2 yoga or vinyasa yoga, we would call lying on our back like this vinyasa, or we would call it um, savasana, right? Which translates to mean corpse pose or dead pose, dead body pose. 
And in Savasana, like if you've ever taken hot yoga with me, you've heard a million times, like bring your heels together, let your toes fall open, arms down by your sides, palms face the ceiling, eyes open, mouth closed, breathing normal, right? Um, in yin, in restorative, rather than calling it Savasana, get this, we call it puddle pose. Um, and it's a lot more freestyle. Rather than acting like a dead body, act like a puddle. You can have your arms and legs apart as much as you want. And that's kind of the spirit of this class is um, making a shape, holding a shape, breathing, right? But your shape doesn't have to be like to a T what anybody else is doing. Um, for those of you that do practice 26 and two yoga with me, I, I love that it's rigid. I love that, um, boy, there's, there's no room for doubt, right? When somebody just tells you like, pick up your foot, you're like, okay. Um, but this style of yoga is a lot more like you're trusting in your inner voice. Um, you get to make more decisions. Again, I love 26 and two yoga because when I'm taking somebody else's class, they're like, lock your knee. And I'm like, all right, great. I don't have to think about it. This class, it is a little bit more up to you to make it whatever it is you want it to be, right? So you can maintain a meditative state, but take whatever form of puddle or savasana works for you. Um, and on that note, if lying down on your back with your legs straight is uncomfortable to your lower back, you are not alone. You're welcome to place um, a small blanket or towel under your lower back, or you can bend your legs up so your feet are on the floor and your knees rest side by side. If, it, if lying on your back with your legs straight hurts your lower back, please feel free to bend the knees or have a little bit of a cushion under your lower back. Okay, wonderful. From here, we're going to do a seated or a, sorry, lying on our back spine twist. So start with your feet close together. You can have your arms out to the side so your body makes a T or you can bend your arms up, cactusing them like goal posts. Keep your left leg long, left foot towards the back of your mat. Bend your right leg up so the foot comes off the floor and bring your right leg across your body let your right hip come off the floor. So right hip stacks on top of left hip. Maybe right knee close to the floor, maybe not. Now you can hold right here with the right knee bent and the left leg straight behind you. I'll give you some other fun variations. You're welcome to bend that left leg and see if you can catch your left foot with your right hand. It's a little quadricep stretch. Or for an IT band stretch to the outer right thigh, you can kick that right leg out to the left and maybe even see if you can catch your right big toe with your left hand. You can do one or both of these motions with the legs. You're also welcome to keep your head on the floor looking up or tilt your right ear towards the right side of your mat, looking to the right for a nice spine neck twist. We're gonna stay here for three minutes. Um, and if you see me looking at my phone, I am not ignoring you. I am timing the postures. That is all. Okay, now we're already about 30 seconds in. And right away, if you notice like what you've done, <laughs> like how far you've gone is not sustainable for um, like two more minutes, that's totally fine, right? Just ease up, do a little something else. If you're like, I don't know, I don't feel anything, why don't you wait a little bit longer where you are and just see what happens, right? You can always go a little bit deeper at the halfway point or towards the end, but we're never forcing the body. And you're just invited to do about 70% of what you think you should be doing. at the halfway point, a minute and a half left. You're welcome to stay right where you are, go a little deeper or ease up. Breathing in and breathing out. Try to keep your right shoulder on the floor as well as your left shoulder.
have about 30 seconds left. If you're uncomfortable, know that the end is near. And if you'd like to, you know, go that little extra bit and like try to catch a foot with a hand, this is your time. Take a slow inhale. Even slower exhale, softening into the posture. Good, and we're gonna reverse out. So we'll start with the neck. If you have your right ear close to your mat, start by rolling your head back to center. If you've caught your right foot with your left hand, release that grip, bend the right leg. If you have your left foot in your right hand, release that grip, straighten your left leg back to the back of your mat. You can place one or both hands on your knee thigh area whoo, and slowly roll your right hip down to the floor. Let your right leg lower down, arms down, legs down, huddle pose, breathing in, breathing out. So when we do long holds of postures, um, for sure we stretch muscle, but when we hold for a long time, we actually start to work into connective tissue and into fascia. So again, even though it might not feel like you're doing a bunch, especially at first, you might actually really feel it the next day. That's why you wanna breathe. And when we do long holds of postures, we also often like, you know, extra stretch one part of the body. And then by that same token, we sometimes cut off a little bit of circulation to another part of the body. So we always do a long puddle pose or savasana in between every posture so that blood flow returns to normal. So you might've felt like a, a rush of blood to the right hip as you returned the right hip down towards the floor, right? It's really normal. Just noticing any sensations in the body. And sometimes the release from the posture can be like as intense as the posture itself, just something to keep in mind. Okay, let's do the other side. You can have your arms out to the side or bent like cactus. This time having your right leg pointing towards the back of your mat, bend your left leg up and slowly cross your left leg over the center line of your body so that the left hip lifts up. Left hip stacking on top of right hip. Try to keep your left shoulder on the floor. Okay, we'll do some options. You can keep, you can stay right here with your um, right leg straight behind you. You have an option to bend that right leg and see if you can catch your right foot with your left hand, left shoulder on the floor. You have an option to stay here for an IT band stretch that outer left thigh knee area. You can kick your left leg out to the right side of the room Ooh, and see if you can catch your left foot with your right hand. And on this side, I don't know if that's happening for me. Again, we're not symmetrical. You can keep your head on the floor or look to the left, rolling the left shoulder down towards the floor. And we're gonna hold here for three minutes, already 30 seconds in. So again, when we hold postures for like 30 seconds or a minute, you're often contracting your muscles to get yourself into the posture. For restorative yoga, see if you can relax into the posture. Like you're going with the waves, going with the flow rather than fighting against it. You're just relaxing into the posture. So it's this constant invitation to return to the breath and then to notice like, hey, am I you know, holding tension in my thigh that I can let go of? Is my jaw tense? I soften my chest a little bit more. Just continue this body scan, seeing where you can relax and let go just a little bit more. Never forcing, never rushing or pushing, just softening into the posture. We're already at the halfway point. I've often said I would rather take a 10 hour car ride and know that it's 10 hours, then take a two hour car ride and have no idea how long it will be. So um, in that vein, I like to tell you time <laughs> so that you know how much longer it is, right? Relax your jaw.
about 30 seconds left. Notice where you're still holding tension. Maybe anything you're still holding on to, let it go through the exhale breath. Take a slow inhale and an easy exhale. We're gonna slowly reverse out. So if you're looking to the left, start by rolling your head back to center. If you have your left leg kicking out to the right or you're catching your left foot with your uh, right hand, release that grip, bending the left leg. If you have your right leg bent and you're holding your right foot with your left hand, release that grip, straighten the right leg. And then with the help of your hands, if you'd like slowly, carefully, whoo, return your left hip down and then lengthen your arms and legs, pedal pose. Breathing in and breathing out. Okay, as you're ready, uh, bend your legs so your feet are on the floor and your knees rest together. Start to roll off to one side. Take a moment lying on your side, maybe giving your knees a squeeze. Good, and then come on up, push yourself up to a comfortable seated position. So next we're gonna do what's called um, shoelace pose or shoestring pose. I'll give you a couple variations. You're gonna start sitting on your butt with your legs out in front of you. See if you can lift your right leg up and cross the right knee on top of the left knee. And if this is easy, see if you can bend that left leg. So right knee on top of left knee. I regret wearing black. I think it's a little bit hard to see me, but right knee on top of left knee. So eventually two ankles on the floor, two knees stack on one another. It might not look, look like this today and that's really normal. One knee might be super lifted. You're welcome to place a blanket in between your knees. And again, you can have your left leg straight out in front of you. It's not better or worse, it's just a different stretch. If you have the left leg out in front of you, you'll actually get more of a hamstring stretch. Now you're welcome to stay here sitting up tall or for a deeper stretch to the outer thigh, you can start to fold forward. Drop your shoulders, drop your head. You can stay here. You can take it deeper by bringing forearms to floor. I'm just gonna throw out a bunch of fun options for you guys. If you want more of a wrist stretch, you can flip palms up like this so you get that nice wrist stretch. Okay, and the last option I'll show you is an eagle arm variation. So if your right knee is on top, you're going to open your arms wide and then give yourself a hug, left elbow on top of right elbow. So right elbow underneath, left elbow on top. You can stay here or have your hands in prayer, thumbs towards your nose. You can stay here or lift your arms up and fold forward, dropping your head. So then you get that deltoid shoulder opening as well. We're going to hold here for four minutes. So we are already 30 seconds in. Nope. Try to press both hips down. So notice if you're leaning way forward, try to sink your hips down. You want to feel this nice stretch to the um, outer right thigh, the leg that's on top. You'll feel a stretch there. Notice where you're carrying tension in your body or anything that your mind seems a little bit stuck on. 
name it, acknowledge it, and then practice non-attachment. Just let it go, whether it's a thought, a worry, a care, a sensation, maybe a muscle that really wants to contract. Just see if you can consciously relax the muscles in the body as you consciously relax the brain, right? We're about halfway through. You're welcome to stay just as you are or take a different upper body variation and maybe something different with the wrists or the hands or eagle arms. Okay, with about 30 seconds left, you can hold right where you are. You can go a little deeper. Again, just notice where you're holding tension. See if you can just let it go through the exhale breath. Good. If you have eagle arms, start by coming upright, otherwise walking yourself up, and then open your arms wide, place your arms down. Start by straightening that left leg out in front of you, maybe with the help of your hands, straightening that right leg out in front of you, and like move your knees a little bit. Bernie Clark, who's like the godfather of yin yoga, often says like, Coming out of yin or restorative yoga postures makes us appreciate what our grandparents must feel like when they're walking around. Sometimes you feel a little bit stiff when you get out of the postures. From here, we're gonna take a stomach savasana or stomach pedal pose so you can lie on your belly. And if lying on your stomach does not work for you, you're welcome to lie on your back or on your side. I just like to give this opportunity in class. So for belly savasana, you're welcome to bend your elbows out with hands on the floor and drop your head down. You can also look to the right with left ear on the mat. And if you do wanna look in one direction, I'll tell you when we're at the halfway point of pedal pose so that you can gently lift your head and look the other direction. You're welcome to keep your elbows bent with your hands close to your face, or you can bring your arms down, palms face the ceiling, toes together, heels fall open. So you do, even if the legs and arms are a little bit wider, um, try to have the toes in and the heels out rather than the heels in and the toes out. Um, it's a different pelvic rotation, different movement for your hips. If you're looking in one direction, slowly, carefully lift your head and look in the other direction, maybe right ear on the mat. Send deep belly breaths in and out through your nose to massage the front of your body. Breathe deep into any point of tension. Let the floor hold you up.
Now I know what you're thinking. Let's do the other side of shoelace, of shoelace pose, shoestring pose. But instead, we're going to do a different posture in between called Sphinx. So as you're ready, slowly lift your head and look straight ahead if you're not already. You're going to bend your arms. I'll show you from the side. So the elbows are under wrists. Arms make a 90 degree angle. Belly on the floor, chest up for a back bend. Feet can be apart. Now this can be a little intense. You're welcome to walk your hands forward. And you're also welcome to place um, a blanket underneath your chest or abdomen or legs if that helps. The big thing here are your shoulders tensing into your ears. I'm right there with you to constantly press the shoulders down and lift the chest up so you get a nice back bend. We're going to hold here for three minutes. So Sphinx pose is a nice way to bend the spine and open the chest. And if you've taken this class before, I'm sorry that you've already heard this joke, but if not, for Sphinx, think of your favorite Sphinx. It can be the Sphinx in Egypt, the Sphinx in Las Vegas, maybe the Sphinx in Harry Potter book four. If you're familiar with mythology, Sphinxes tell riddles um, and you're supposed to like answer the riddle to like, you know, get into, get to the next level, get to the cave, get to the Horcrux, whatever it is, right? So um, a friend of mine, Michael Joel Hall, often says in yoga, yoga provides the answers so that you get to ask the question. So I often think with Sphinx pose, yoga switches it up. So the answer, right, the command in yoga is like your backward bending, your forearms are on the floor, your shoulders are out of your ears, your feet are relaxed, your jaw is soft. The answer, right, is Sphinx pose. It's the posture that we're doing. But then you get to ask the questions, the riddles, like, why does this feel so good today, but it was so hard to do last time? Um, or like, wow, why is it really hard for me to sit still right now? Hmm. Just things like that, right? You are practicing the posture so that you can ask questions to yourself about yourself. Yoga is a really wonderful opportunity to get to know yourself a little bit better as you breathe through your nose. Just a minute left. Drop the shoulders, lift the chest, relax your pelvic floor. In the last 30 seconds, for my flexi folks who would like to get more of a back bend, spread your fingers wide, put your hands on the floor, and try to straighten your arms. This is called seal pose. So the arms are going to stay in sphinx. You're just going to straighten them. Shoulders down, chest up, slow inhale. Even slower exhale. Good. And slowly soften down making your way into belly savasana or puddle pose. You're welcome to do a similar or different variation. Maybe if you kept your head on the floor in the first puddle pose, you look right and left or vice versa. If you do wanna to look to one side, I will tell you when we're at the halfway point so you can gently look to the other side. If you have one ear on the floor, gently lift your head and look to the other side of the room so other ear is on the floor. As you inhale, feel your rib cage expand. And as you exhale, soften everything into the floor. Let the floor hold you up. Good. If you're looking to one side, slowly lift your head. Everybody bring your chin forward, place your hands on the floor, and carefully push up for the other side of shoelace. So starting sitting on your back with your feet long in front of you. And this time you're going to take your left leg, bend the left leg over. So left knee stacks on top of right knee. You can stay here or bend the right leg. So eventually two ankles on the floor. And again, this knee might be super bent super lifted, I should say, eventually 
one knee stacks on top of the other, eventually heels close to your hips. Again, lots of different variations. You can have your hands forward with head dropped. You can flip your palms for a nice wrist stretch so that feels good. Or you can take the eagle arm variation for eagle arms, spread your arms wide, like you're open to the universe, everything that's coming your way. And then give yourself a hug, left elbow under right elbow, left under right, give yourself a hug. You can stay here or take eagle arms with hands together, thumbs towards your nose, pinkies away from your face. You can also interlace fingers, grab palms, grab shoulders. Good, you can stay here or lift the arms up and then fold forward, drop your head down and you'll get that nice stretch on the um, outer left thigh. If you keep the right leg in front of you, as you fold forward, you'll also get a hamstring stretch to the right leg. So again, having one um, leg straight or both legs bent, it's not better or worse, it's just different. So we're holding here for four minutes and we're already about 45 seconds in. What a delight. Notice if your hips are coming way off the floor, try to sink your hips down. Notice where you're carrying tension and just let it go. Just breathe. Too much is too much. Too little is too little. Always trying to find the sweet spot. We're at the halfway point, two more minutes. Notice what stories you're telling yourself, where the mind is traveling to, maybe any emotions coming up. Notice, name, acknowledge, and let go. Our thoughts are like clouds. Sometimes they're white and fluffy. Sometimes they're gray and stormy. Sometimes they pass quickly. Sometimes they linger all day. It's important to remember that you are not the clouds, you are the sky. So you're just watching your thoughts and feelings play out while you practice a little bit of non-attachment, right? Kind of viewing yourself as you would view a dear friend, compassionately for sure, but recognizing that like your feelings, your thoughts are not you, right? You are so much more than that. about 30 seconds left. Take a slow inhale through your nose. Even slower exhale through your nose. Notice any lingering tension, any kind of hold out parts of the body and just let go, release, relax into the posture. We're gonna slowly come out of it. So if you've got eagle arms, keep those arms as you slowly push yourself up, coming back and then release those arms, arms out, arms down, straighten your right leg, straighten your left leg, do any sort of motions that might feel good for your body and then turn around, puddle pose, lying on your back. 
And just notice any sensations in the body as you release out of the posture. As well as, you know, it could be physical, right? But it could also be, again, like psychological, emotional, spiritual. Um, emotions are involuntary neurological events that live in our body. We like to think of ourselves as thinking beings that occasionally feel when in fact we are feeling beings that, oca that occasionally think. So the same way that you might feel something in your hamstring, it's very normal to feel something in your heart, right? It's a, it's a neurological event. It's a nervous system event. Sometimes when we move the body, something, something in our heart moves a little bit too. So just noticing if and when that comes up. And if you're like, nope, I don't feel anything, that's totally normal too, right? So yoga is just a discernment of what feels true to you. Bend your legs up, feet close together. Let your knees rest side by side. Roll off to one side, maybe a side that you haven't rolled off to yet. Take a moment on your side. And then slowly push yourself up. Next, we're gonna do a posture that if you practice 26 and two yoga with me will be familiar in that style of yoga, we would call it fixed firm. And this, I'm gonna give you different variations and we call it saddle pose. So you're gonna start, you can start with your knees and feet together. And for this variation, you're welcome to sit down on your feet or you can open your feet and knees and eventually sit down between your heels. If sitting between your heels is not happening today, you're welcome to take a blanket, a pillow, maybe even Harry Potter book four and put it under your butt, okay? You're also welcome um, to place a blanket under your knees, under your ankles, anywhere that might feel uncomfortable. Now you're welcome to stay here. This is a really wonderful stretch through your toes, ankles, knees, as well as quadriceps, tops of the thighs. You can also take a back bend here, placing your hands on the floor, maybe forearms on the floor and head back or maybe even neck, shoulders on the floor, arms over your head, or arms down by your sides. So lots of variations here. And again, you can always have your feet together, sitting on your feet. For those of you who can sit between your heels comfortably, maybe try bringing your knees back together. We're gonna hold here for three minutes, we're already 30 seconds in. So, you know, in 26 and 2 yoga, we hold this posture for like, I don't know, 20 seconds, 30 seconds, maybe a minute if the teachers like, you know, went quick through the standing series and they have time. Um, but three minutes is a little bit different, right? It's a stretch to the tops of the thighs and kneecaps, a great way to stretch out the ankles, the toes, all the tendons and ligaments and joints. For a deeper back bend, you can try lifting your chest up or for another variation, you can try to get your back flat on the floor. Notice where you're carrying tension in your body. Just let it go through your breath. Give yourself permission to be at ease. Noticing where you're holding on to tension, what part of the posture you're fighting against. And just give in. Let gravity do the work. 
Never forcing, hiding, or straining. Let it be easy. A little less than a minute left. seconds left. If you'd like to go a little deeper, whatever that means for you, maybe more of a back bend or knees close together, or hips sitting down, feel free to do that in the final few moments. Otherwise, just hold where you are. Slow inhale. Even slower exhale. Good. As you're ready, place your hands on your feet or the floor beside you and slowly, carefully push yourself up and then slowly, carefully turn, lie on your back for final Savasana. If you have a blanket or pillow nearby, you're welcome to like put a blanket over you or put a pillow under your head. And then as you release out of that posture, you will probably get a rush of blood through the toes, ankles, knees, and hips. So noticing any sensations in the body could even be like a perception of temperature in your feet changing, just appreciating whatever it is as you release into a neutral position for your final puddle, final savasana. I'm just still so tickled by the idea of like puddle pose after years of saying corpse pose, you know, it's like puddle, so delightful. Find your final puddle shape. You can close your eyes, open your arms and legs as much as you want. And let's just check in again. What's still weighing heavy? Was there anything that you found it difficult to set aside during class? Just give yourself permission politely to set it aside as you breathe through your nose being gentle and compassionate towards yourself and remembering that yoga, concentration, meditation, it's all just a practice, no destination. How is your heart? How is your heart today? And how is your heart in this moment? And finally, where do you feel restored? And how can you take this knowledge, this insight out to make the world a healthier and happier place? Breathing in and breathing out. Taking time for yoga, for stretching, for breathing. It's not selfish, right? It's actually really crucial when we take some time for ourselves to understand ourselves better and just to give us some time away from stress. We can come back with renewed compassion and vision for those around us. So if you're ever feeling like, oh, I don't have time for this, right? Or, there's so many other things I could be doing. I'm right there with you. Make time. It doesn't have to be 60 minutes. It can be a five minute child's pose, but make time, a little bit of time every day just to take care of yourself. Take a slow inhale through your nose. Even slower exhale through your nose. And all is coming. <laughs>